All right, folks, I just came up from that staircase and you are not gonna believe what I found right over here. All right, folks, it is officially the first fall weekend of 2023 and we are heading to our first fall estate sale down this country road right here and the house we are looking for is on 26 acres of property now we're just gonna be uh, treasure hunting in the house but um it's about a 1600 square foot house it looks gorgeous from the photos I was able to see. The uh, house was built in 1924. So we're just looking for it and this might be it right over here because we have a for sale sign on it. And I think this is the one. Yes, we are here. Let's get parked. Oh, wow, really looks like a nice old house. Yeah, so this is the outside of the property, which is just really nice. I love this look, it's just beautiful. You look at the size of the chimney, absolutely massive. There's not too many people here, few people waiting, but uh, not much at all. Just figured I'd show you a little bit of the house here. Here's the backyard area. And then look at all the land that they have. There's a pool here and it just goes back and back, look at this, they've got a shed, they've got a garage here. I mean, it's just amazing out here in the country. I just love it. Look how far back that goes over there. I mean, it just keeps going. I'll come out a little bit more so you could see, but it is just, just incredible. And here's the house from this direction. I can't wait to get in there. It looks exciting. They did start to make a list actually because a few people showed up. So I am number one on the list. So we're definitely gonna get in first. All right, heading in. First on the list. All right, so we've got a bunch of glassware here. Some of which has sold, but this is really nice. I like the uh, pink colors on this. It really stands out. And that's one of the things you're really looking for. Uh, with the glass and ceramic items as you're looking for color. Now, um, having an animal on this, this beautiful bird is great. The floral decorations on the side are awesome. And uh, this happens to be um, Minton. So we'll get a little bit closer on that if we can. It's a popular one to look for. These pink plates sell for really good money. You know, it's going to go for more and bigger sizes, but this is a nice stack of them for 20. So we're going to pick up this set for, for 20 bucks and they all look to be in great shape. So we've got one, two, let's see how the total is, three, four, five, six, seven, Check and see if there's any damage. Eight. Nine. Ten. This is awesome. I'll flash some comps on the screen for, you know, sold for different sizes. And, you know, you'll get a sense on some of the value of these types of plates. So, great find to start off. So, I'm pretty sure that this is Fenton. Um, the price on it is five. Um, you could see here it has these um, ruffled crimped edges, which is something sometimes to look for. It also has this clear edge around the top, which is pretty distinctive for Fenton pieces from what I've seen. Um, but this piece is you know, probably like an $18 piece plus shipping, so I'm gonna pass on it. But this is definitely a style to be on the lookout for from what I've seen. All right, so that's where we were, where we found the pink dishes and then across over here. And this is why it pays to look for patterns. Look at this. It's a cup and saucer from, you guessed it, 
Minton. And price is only five bucks. Shout out to Cat the Nurse Flipper who is always talking about looking for cups and saucers. She has a really good video out on them, so you should definitely uh, check that video out if you want to learn more about it. But look, we have another one as well. So we're going to get both of these. I'm not sure if this one is mint and also. No, it's different. So uh, let's add these two to the pile. We are packing it with pink today, folks. All right, so there are some other brands here that I'm taking a look at with the teacups. It really is key to know the brands. Uh, this is Salisbury, doesn't really go for that much, 15, 20 bucks uh, with shipping, so we're gonna leave them here. Then we also have a Clarence Bone China. You'll come across a lot of Bone China from England. Um, this is also not really that valuable. Um, we've got a green and we've got a red, so we're gonna pass on that. And then this one here, um, it's 10 bucks for the set. It's a Charles R. Rent, and that one also doesn't typically go for that much. Uh, so we're gonna leave that here. And then also there's some more uh, Salisbury. So I think we definitely got uh, a really nice set here with all of the mint, and that was really the, the top of the brands that were here. All right, so when I said that there was a bird on this plate, well, that's partly correct. Well, this is technically a, I'm gonna try to say this without laughing, but it's a cockatrice, C-O-C-K-A-T-R-I-C-E. It's an English mythical beast, and it has the head of a rooster, but the body of a dragon. And because it has that, cool creature on here uh, that's just another element that helps to make this one valuable so i definitely could sell this entire lot at once for several hundred dollars but the way to go on these six inch plates definitely seems to be selling them one at a time because comps data shows that they reliably sell for between 70 and 80 dollars a plate so, you know, it would take a little longer doing that, but I'd rather do that and make $700 to $800 on this set than, you know, several hundred dollars on it. So uh, be on the lookout for these because this is a killer find and they sell great in any form and any size. So over at the other end of the table is this interesting political cartoon. It's uh, General Grant at Central Park. Um, this actually was um, shown in different forms. You could find it in Harper's Weekly, for example, um, but it's about a $10 piece. So I'm gonna leave it here for the 25, but it's very cool. I like it. Nice. Nice and historical, and uh, someone will like this who collects this type of uh, stuff, who you know maybe just buys it locally. Moving on from General Grant, we're going to look across the table here. Remember, we're always looking for bright and colorful. That's a clue, but doesn't always indicate it's something valuable. It does depend. Um, these interesting items here have these little holes in them. You can see we have a red one here, and we also have a blue one here. And these are tea bag strainers. So we strain the uh, liquid right into the bottom there. And these yeah, go for like 12 bucks, 15 bucks. That also includes shipping usually. So, you know, not worth picking them up for five. But there are some designs and styles that are worth looking into and could go for more money. So that's why I just wanted to point them out because they're pretty cool looking. All right, so one of the brands to definitely be on the lookout for for cast iron is Griswold. Um, it's upside down, so let me show you right here. Uh, you want to look for it, though, at a much lower price than this, because this is 80 bucks, and this one here is a little bigger, $100, um, but that's too much for these particular ones. You definitely want to look up the uh, model numbers, because that's also going to be a uh, key into 
figuring out value and you also have to look at you know condition as well i mean you could restore this to some extent with cleaning but um you know these are pretty beat up so i'm uh, gonna pass on them for those prices but definitely be on the lookout for the griswold name so over here we have some more modern china so i am gonna pass on that As you can see here we have more modern types of markings uh, over here is a pretty big pewter set now i normally do look for a pewter um, could be quite valuable this comes from the 70s it's a brand called countryware unfortunately this particular brand does not really sell that well uh, and it's all country wear, every single one of these pieces. So I, I am going to pass on it for that reason. Um, we've got to know the sell-through rates. So we're going to just leave it here. But, you know, I do look for Peter, but just, just not this particular set. All right, so we're going to move on from this area into this room. All right, well, I was looking around over here, and I was drawn over to the plates. And we do have some common brands that uh, we ran into earlier, like Salisbury. But I don't know if you see what I see. Look what we have under here. Two more Mintons. <laughs> yes. So we're going to add this to our uh, stack over here. And uh, so far, we are really loading up with the pink stuff. Now, some of the stuff I just have to pass because the prices are just too high. Like you could see here, and this is a nice painting, but it's definitely not that old because you can see the paint still looks, you know, fairly fresh and there's not a lot of aging onto the board. Now inside there is some cool ephemera. There's some neat postcards. There's not that much though. Like you could even see back there, it's empty. Uh, and the postcards aren't even that old. So um, yet yeah, there's a hundred dollar price sticker on there. So that's definitely sticker shock for me. I'm gonna have to pass uh, on that one. Although, you know, I do like ephemera and art stuff and Santa, but not for that. You know, like over here, there's this cool bell. I mean, talk about a big bell, but 125 for the bell. I'm uh, gonna have to pass for that. Uh, this is something I wanted to point out because uh, when you come across sheet music, uh, this is what some people wind up doing with it. They frame it and they display it. So you know, just keep that in mind when you come across sheet music. Not everyone is using it, you know, to play on the piano. Some of them like to you know, hang it up because a lot of the sheet music covers look really cool. So uh, this is a neat stitch pattern um, calendar design. Uh, good for home decor. I don't know that I would have a buyer on it uh, for much more than 25. You know, if I tried to flip it on eBay, plus it is pretty big. You'd have to take some you know, good care in shipping this. It's going to require a big box. All these are calculations that I make, so i uh, going to pass on it for the 25. There are some books here, but they are $5 unless otherwise marked. I rarely pay five dollars uh, or more for a book unless i know it's something that really has you know significant value normally you're doing two dollars for a hardcover or a dollar hardcover and 50 cents but you know, sometimes at estate sales when they don't have as many books then they're gonna tend to price it up more um, because they just don't have as much of it so um this is you know pretty beat up for example this uncle tom's cabin and uh it's all you know, detached inside, for example. So you can see it's really coming apart. So, you know, this one doesn't even have the binding on it at all. You know, so I gotta pass on this stuff. All right, so we came from that way and we are gonna head off into this area. There's no basement to explore. There is an upstairs. This is the bathroom. So, uh, and then we'll walk our way out that way. Okay, so I know I have a lot of cat fans here. But let me uh, show you. This is pretty dirty. Now, I do always say to look past the dirt, but we are talking about toilet muck type of dirt. And um, this does get pretty nasty if we look inside here. Ew. And how much are you willing to clean to try to flip something? <laughs> 
Uh, I'm gonna pass on this particular item because I, I really am not convinced I'd be able to get that much for it anyway. It's relatively modern. It was made in Taiwan, so um, we're, we're gonna leave this uh, here, okay? <laughs> there you go, little double tap, and I'm gonna clean my hands. All right, while I was cleaning my hands here, I did come across this really cool uh, teddy bear item. It's painted on this piece of slate, which is really cool. The green sticker means it's only a buck. So I love that. Someone's gonna really like that hanging in you know, their kid's room or something. So I will add that to our little grouping over here. And we broke the pink streak. All right, time to head out over here. It doesn't look like there's that much. But uh, then we'll walk our way back out and head up the stairs and see what's up there. You know, I am on the lookout for more art and this is bright and colorful, but uh, this is a screen printing, so it's not original. And so I'm gonna pass on it for the uh, $40. All right, well, Christmas time is not too far away, uh, but unfortunately for this Santa dressed plush, uh, he is, damaged he's got a loose head looks like his beard is missing if this is intended to be santa which looks like it is instead of like an elf looks like he's missing an eyebrow here and um even for the five dollar price tag i'm gonna pass up on it but this is a name you should look for for plush i've talked about it in the past but it's r dockin always look for that i normally pick it up but uh, not with this much damage on it, still gonna have to pass on it for the five. All right, let's head out that way. Looks like George Washington is calling us over. Can you imagine staring at that every day? When you sit down and try to relax, you got George Washington looking at you. <laughs> you can never live up to the guy's standards. <laughs> Too much pressure. Oh, I'm not surprised this is a real serious room because they've got the piano right there as well. So there are some vintage Santas here on the mantle. Uh, these are Tom Clark's, uh, so you could see the name here. It's definitely one to look for. Um, you know, his stuff could sell for about this price range, sometimes a little bit higher. Like this one, the cheapest you could find it right now on eBay is 63, uh, but at a $50 buy-in, it's just, there's just not enough meat on the bone as they like to say on American Pickers. So this is why sometimes I come to the second day of the sale because for flipping purposes, sometimes you're just priced out and you know, this sale, there's a lot of that going on here today for the first day right now this is pretty cool um 10 bucks it's an unesco music box you can hear it's playing toyland it actually looks much older than it is um you know this actually comes from 1980 uh, but does it look like it's much older than that i mean it actually was purposely made to look a little bit older um, you could get something like this for like 30 bucks on eBay, so we're gonna pass on it for the 10, but it's, you know, it's a cool piece. So we have some more of the figures over here, which I'm going to pass on, but this is actually something I wanted to show you because I'm on the lookout more for vases. Now this is a cloisonne vase. Um, you could tell that by the structure and this top here. A lot of times the top is missing. Um, sometimes these could sell very well in pairs, but you could still sell them good just having a single piece. But what I want to show you on the bottom is where it says China. Now, a lot of times we talk about passing up things that are made in China, but really it's more passing up things that are stamped literally with the words made in China. But this just saying the word China by itself, that's actually a good sign of age. So the cloisonne vase, uh, vases, they have um, bright painted colors onto metal uh, like this. And there's uh, typically uh, a lot of floral designs. So flowers are starting to become more my friends as opposed to my uh, enemies. As I look at these uh, types of items more as the types of art pieces they are. I think for 50, I'm going to pass. Let me know what you would do in the comment section. I think that's pretty close to retail on it. I probably could get a little bit more out of it, but yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm going to pass on it. It's just too high right now. 
All right, so we have a bunch of figures here, including some Royal Copenhagen Christmas trees. They're cool trees, but you know, 50 bucks a piece, I gotta pass on them because you know, that's about retail. Um, a lot of times they'll even come with the box for that and these don't have the boxes. We do have some Santas, they're 40 bucks a piece, but they're modern Santas. I mean, it's you know from the annual Santa collection, 2006, so $200 for the set. I'm just, you know, again, I'm just gonna have to pass, so, oh boy. All right, so over here we have some nativity figures. Um, they're vintage, it's from Fontanini. They have a plastic feel to them, um, which to me is kind of a, a downfall because it makes them look too modern. Uh, they're in good shape, but at $180, I definitely have to pass on it. It doesn't even have the structure or anything. Uh, and you know, I'm not aware of any of the figures in a lot selling for that much. So I'm um, gonna pass on it again. All right, over here, it looks like we have a lithograph that is signed by D. Lobenberg. I know of an artist named David Lobenberg who does watercolor art. Uh, but I cannot find any information about this particular print, which is called uh, All That Jazz. Uh, signed, uh, 250 of them, that's number 92. Price tag on it, 50 bucks. Uh, they really priced up the art here. Like for example, uh, this one here is priced at $100. So uh, without having any uh, comps information on this, particularly given the size of it, uh, I'm gonna pass on it for the 50. So now we are going to move up these stairs and see if we have any luck up there. All right, so I just came up from that staircase and you are not going to believe what I found right over here. This giant lot of vintage games magazines for just a dollar a piece and a lot of these go back to the 1980s. This is a popular magazine. People love games. They love um, these old ones, you know, because they can't find them anymore. And especially if there's no writing in them and the puzzles haven't been done, of course. And right over here, we have some older ones as well. Uh, there's probably about, uh, I've got to say about a hundred of them or so in here. Now, uh, in terms of comps, like if you had about 30 of them from the 80s, which we definitely have here, that would go for about $125, you know, shipping included. Um, so these could be broken up in different ways. You could sell them one at a time for like 15, 20 bucks a piece, uh, or uh, you could lot them by year. So if you could find all the ones from uh, 1986, for example, you know, you can see there you got January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, where's October? November, December. So hopefully October's around here somewhere, I don't know. This is one that's damaged, but most of them look like they're in great shape. So uh, this is gonna be a great deal. Uh, we're gonna just grab the whole thing. I mean, look at this, some of these, some of these go back to 1985. Uh, look at this. This has a Super Bowl on it. This has the uh, the USS Enterprise on it. So Star Trek fans, Star Wars fans will love this as well. We've got the TIE Fighters. This is really neat. Oh, look at that. you got the Rubik's Cube looking item with the dice. has kind of like the Superman logo on it. This is really fun. It looks like we have most of the ones from 85. Look at the outfits on here. Wow. Wow. This is one of the finds of the day. I mean, maybe the find of the day. I really like the plates, but oh, look at this. This is amazing. Oh my God. Uh, definitely Madonna looking on the front. That's gonna be really popular. This is neat. All right, we gotta stack these up in the box and this is really the answer to my reselling prayers uh, at this sale today. <laughs> the magazines coming through, definitely be on the lookout for them, folks. Just figured I'd show you this as I'm uh, packing up uh, ones in the box. We also have these uh, little supplements to the magazines as well, which could also add value. But 
Uh, look at these from 1984. The gumball machine. Just so cool. Look at this, Mr. T. Mr. T on it. Oh my God, Clubber Lang himself. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. I love the 80s stuff. It just has so much nostalgia to it. Oh, look at that, we got Cher there. This is cool, Willie Nelson. Um, Robin Williams is on there also. Uh, what else we got here? This is just cool. All right, I just want to show you the ones from 84. What a great year. And as you can see, we, we definitely have two giant stacks in here. Nice. Now, this is funny over on the other side um, because just to turn it around and show you where I was. That's where I was right there. And so now right here, this is what's off the um, stairway coming up. Uh, I picked them up at a different estate sale. I had actually issues uh, two or volumes, I should say, volumes two through six and the colors on uh, the front were great. I got them at a, a lower price at an estate sale than what they're asking for here. They were like a few bucks a piece and I sold them for $50 without volume one. So for volume one through six, they want 50. I'm definitely gonna pass, especially due to the fading uh, on, the, on the covers. And that's real important. People really want that color intact on these. If you can get them for you know, a lower price, uh, you know, definitely look into it. But um, for, for 50 bucks, it's too much with the fading. And the books here are five bucks, uh, once again, unless otherwise marked. And that generally means they'd be priced higher than that, um, you know, more than five bucks. So I'm not seeing anything here that is worth picking up. So we'll just take a peek over here and then that'll be it. That's, that's pretty much all um, for this house. There's no uh, basement that has anything in it. There is a basement, but there's nothing in it. So not too much up here. There's no bedrooms or anything. Most of the stuff is uh, really downstairs actually. Well, we're here now. Giant dictionary, 20 bucks. That's too much. Not gonna get it for the 20. And yeah, no. Blue gold, blue and gold annual. How much I want on that? $10. All right, I think that's gonna wrap us up. Uh, wow, the magazines really saved us and the plates came in really handy as well. So all in all, I'm still happy um, with everything we got here. Let's check out, see how much the magazines are gonna cost. All right, so I did check out. Um, I'll give you the total price in just a second, but uh, state sale dealer gave me a really great deal here. Uh, look at the total here, $35 for everything here. You're probably saying, what? That doesn't even make any sense, right? But she looked at the box of magazines, just gave me a bulk price of $20. That's why it pays to buy in bulk. Uh, like I said, this technically was a dollar. I did tell her about the two extra plates that I got and uh, she said, don't worry. She just threw that in. And uh, she said total price for everything is 35. I did tell her the price should be more than that because you know it says $20 for the set. So 20 plus 20, that would be 40. And then remember it was five bucks a piece for the teacup. So it definitely should be more than that. But she just said, don't worry about it. She goes, just take it for the 35. Uh, she does watch the channel, by the way. She enjoys it. And there's some information she wants me to pass on to you. So I'm going to do that next. All right, everyone. Well, I'm really happy. That was a great bulk deal. Uh, being able to lot up all of those magazines plus the breakable items, all those mint and plates, uh, that was great. You know, this really goes to show how if you could expand your knowledge base uh, into other areas that you traditionally were not as familiar with, uh, really can help you out. So, you know, moving more into the breakables category, as you see me doing with some of the recent glass pickups and uh, the water basin and um, the pitcher, uh, and this is another good example with the Minton plates, uh, could, could really help, uh, especially at a sale like this where there's a lot of stuff that's priced high on that first day that you can't get. 
Um, now, you know, I've talked about this with the estate sale dealers. You know, when I mentioned that things are too high, they're too high for me. They're too high for me to flip on the first day. Second day could be a different situation. Uh, and also could be a great deal for someone who just wants to go out and pick up something for themselves and get it for a little bit less than a retail price. Um, so, so keep that in mind as well. You know, there's different clientele. The estate sale dealers are not just there to cater to resellers. They have to make money uh, for themselves as well. And also they have to try to make money uh, for the estate. Uh, so, uh, but you know, I saw a lot of things sold today. So I think that they did really well overall. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the state sale dealers in this area typically watch this channel, including the one here. And um, one of the requests that I actually had from the state sale dealer was to pass on something to uh, the buyers out there. Uh, just make sure you are reading the descriptions of the estate sale. So, so for example, uh, if it says it closes at two o'clock, it really closes at two o'clock. It's probably not going to be open till three, four, five o'clock, even if you send a message afterwards asking for it. Uh, or or if it says, please don't inquire about prices before the sale, don't send the state sale dealer all these questions asking how much something costs. Because, you know, if you get information and you think a particular item's too high in price, you might not show up for that sale and then they lose out and you may lose out because there could have been other items there that, you know, you thought were you know good that you would pick up. But you know, they don't get everything in the photo. So the only way to know is to really go and explore. Like I had no idea that those games magazines were there. I knew that some of the breakables were there. I didn't know anything I picked up today. I didn't even know was there from the picture. So that's why you got to actually go. So, um, again, I had fun. Um, it was a different type of sale, not one where we loaded up with tons of different things. It really was mostly two things in bulk. So it just goes to show depending on the situation, you know, you just change up the strategy. All right, well, it's the day after the estate sale. Mrs. Primetime just sent me a message that there's a house not too far away from us that uh, posted on Facebook that they have a bunch of stuff spread out on the lawn for free. So I just pulled up for it. Uh, there's a guy who just came out and is looking it over as well. So we're gonna get over to the lawn and see if there's any good treasures in all this free stuff on the lawn. All right, so. Believe it or not, three trade paperback comic books. We have Walking Dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight volumes for free. So uh, I've sold these before many times. These are great to pick up if you see them in bundles and you can't beat free. And there was a little rain earlier, so some stuff got a little wet, but uh, I should be able to wipe this off easily. Uh, Marvel uh, book, it's Avengers, so grab that. This Star Wars book, I can add to the Star Wars collection I picked up recently. And we have another one here. Look at that one. The AT-ATs on there. That's. We got that. We got two Star Trek books. Shout out to Esme and Boldly Grow. Pick up that. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, Volume 1. You know what? For free, why not? I have some Sherlock Holmes stuff. And we have a Batman book also. So we're going to pick this up too. So I was thinking of picking these up, but unfortunately they're not complete sets. Uh, that's not a complete set. And these are missing several volumes. And these really sell best as complete sets, so we'll leave them here for someone else. All right, here's an author to look out for, Erin Hunter. Uh, she does a lot of these cat books. And so there's a fantasy element to them as well. We have some soft covers and we have hard covers in nice shape as well. So uh, these sell very well in lots and it's a very easy decision to pick uh, this up uh, in this entire box. We got a whole bunch of them. Look at this. Wow, this is great. Uh, and she does some other stuff too. It's not all cats, but she does do a lot of cat themed bear stuff as well, a lot of animal things.
And look at this, we have the C.S. Lewis uh, Chronicles of Narnia slip cover set complete for free. It does have some damage on that side, but for free I'll definitely pick them up because someone will still buy them even if I sold it without the slip cover. It's complete and that's key. So we'll grab this whole box. And I did talk to the owner, by the way, he said, take as much as you want. All right, going through the clothing and look at this. We have Wonder Woman scrubs. So we'll grab that, see if there's any other superhero looking stuff here. Looks like, a, I don't know. Oh, Iron Man. Okay, that's something Iron Man. I really like the Wonder Woman thing better though. So I think we'll just grab that. That Iron Man thing just looked kind of weird. <laughs> it almost looks like an Iron Man bra. <laughs> I don't know. It's really weird. What the heck is that thing? I don't know. I, 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 even for free, I think I got to pass on it. But we'll definitely go with the Wonder Woman. Oh, gosh. Man, you really got to act fast when these things come up because you could see this stuff is getting soaked. I'm going to turn this over just in case, you know, someone else comes by and wants some of this stuff. Like, you know, this too. Someone else might want it, but... It's got, I'm going to cover it up somehow. Let's see. Here we go. Just so it stays somewhat protected. Had to press it down a little or that was going to blow away. You know, this thing is cool. It's solid wood. And I could definitely use it for something. So, yeah, we're going to grab this also. All right, just loaded everything up. Now, he does have some Funkos for sale on the porch. So they're out of the rain. So I'm gonna check those out and see if there's any worth uh, picking up, making an offer on. So there's a bunch here. This is the main one I'm interested in, the Milan Writing Con, because that goes for like 25 plus like 15 shipping, so like 40 bucks. This is a pretty good one too, the WW84 Wonder Woman, uh, Diana Prince Gala. You know, that could go for like over 20. And then, you know, that's like a $10 pop. Elsa, no, not interested in the Frozen. The Game of Thrones is pretty damaged. But there's some other Wonder Woman 84s. Got a little cheetah print action going on there. Hello, wanna come home with prime time? Let's see what else we got over here. Another Wonder Woman 84. Frozen, no, pass on the Frozen ones. Okay. All right, so as you can see here, I was able to snag the Funkos. He asked uh, how much I would offer for all three of them. I said 20 bucks. He said, sounds good to me. And um, you know, I was happy to pay the 20 given you know everything else that I wound up getting today for free. So um, yeah, wow, this worked out. And just pay attention to those Facebook ads because you never know. I mean, a Facebook ad is where I found the Holy Grail Star Trek uh, USS Enterprise Mego item that I showed you recently. So it's definitely a good place uh, for, for sourcing. Just got to keep your eye out and you got to be fast because yeah, as you could see, that rain could come down quickly and unexpectedly. So glad we were able to get it all before it really, you know, became a mess. Oh, and by the way, these Walking Dead books, check it out. It's the first eight books in the run. Awesome. All right, so check it out. I was able to find a good use for that furniture piece. I could display some of my glass and ceramic and pottery items that I get on top, keep them off the ground. And here I put all of those games magazines that I got at the state sale and they're all sorted by year. So these actually start in 1979. I found two of them from the 70s. Then uh, the rest of these on the left side are from the 80s. This is the one from 1982. Uh, some of them are complete years, so I'm very happy about that. And these are all uh, 1990 to 2001. So awesome. It really looks nice coming down here. So uh, I'm really, uh, excited about this free pickup. The more organized you are, the better your reselling business is going to be. I could tell you that. Who do I see around the corner? It's Daisy. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, Daisy.
What are you doing? Where were you running off to? Where were you running off to? I'm surprised you're not on your perch. Why aren't you on your perch over there? <laughs> How are you? How are you? Hello. Oh, look at that. There's a daisy dance. Oh, you're so excited. Wait, where are you going to go? Oh, I know. Is one of your toys underneath the couch? So we have to go get that for you. I think one of your toys is under the couch. Let's see. What do we got under here? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, here it is. Here it is, Daisy. I found it. I found it. <laughs> I found it. It's right down here. What is it, though? It looks yellow. <laughs> okay, okay. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down, Daisy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you're excited. All right, hold on. It's down here, Daisy. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. What do we got here? What's that? Oh, what's that? <laughs> it's like a little flower. There you go. Oh, Daisy, wow, you really put on a show today. Wow, look at that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, folks. If you're impressed on Daisy's uh, theatrics today, uh, let me know in the comment section. She really put on a show for everybody today. Wow. All right, Daisy. I don't want to grab that or uh, I, might, I might get bit. <laughs> so, all right, everyone. Uh, Daisy's back to guarding the treasures. So, we'll see you back the next one, everyone. Take care.